In this video, we will talk about another very important medical condition which we call the obstructive sleep apnea. So let's talk about the obstructive sleep apnea or OSA. First of all, let's define uh, OSA or obstructive sleep apnea. As the name implies, OSA is the combination of three words, obstructive sleep apnea. So there is partial or complete absence of the breath or apnea and it happens uh, while the patient is asleep and there is some sort of obstruction. So definition goes this way, a state of partial or complete absence of the breaths due to the partial or complete blocking of the airway while the patient is sleeping. There are certain risk factors which are very famous uh, for the development of the obstructive sleep apnea. And these are that uh, it happens in majority of cases where, where the patient is obese and abnormal obesity or the disorder obesity is known as the Pickwickian syndrome. Then uh, the, why it happens in these patients? Because uh, in these patients are those where, who have the nasal deformity. Normally what happens that when, when we are sleeping, especially during the rapid eye movement sleep, uh, uh, the helping muscles which keep the uh, airway open, like the genuglossus and the palatal muscle, they, they become hypotonic during the rapid eye movement sleep, which is the deepest part of the sleep. And in case of the obese people are those who have got the nasal deformity. What happens that when the pressure falls to around like two millimeter of the mercury in the nasal path, uh, in the uh, pathway of the airway, these muscles just collapse and they obstruct the airway. When they obstruct the airway, the inspiratory air drops down and there develops the hypoxia, which then the, there is CNS stimulation because of the hypoxia and patient tries to uh, make an effort. And during this hypoxia and uh, while the patient is trying to uh, make an effort and patient is in the rapid eye movement sleep, patient had to sort of get up to uh, make that voluntary effort. So this is how the patient gets disturbance in the sleep and anyone can imagine if anyone is awakened during the rep deep part of the sleep, one will have the personality disorders. But the interesting point is these patients uh, have hundred of episodes of these disturbances but they do not recall these episodes. So obesity, uh, nasal deformity, alcoholism, rhinitis or the inflammation of the uh, nasal pathways, acromegaly which again uh, makes the muscle of the tongue hypertrophied, adenoids which again obstruct and uh, if the patient is using the sedatives, then they do go into the deepest sleep and they, uh, the muscles which were helping, they become the most hypotonic at that state. Enlarged tonsils are again obstructing the airway. Uh, I perhaps return it again, acromegaly and strong analgesics. They are also a risk factor for the development of the obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, the clinical presentation in the patients of the obstructive sleep apnea, the two most important clinical features are the loud snoring and the daytime sleepiness. That is why I have written it in the uh, red uh, color. Uh, loud snoring will be uh, told by the spouse or the family and patient is sleepy over the day. This can be uh, given either by the family or the uh, colleagues if the patient is working somewhere. There, there will be personality disorder. Why? As I already said that during the rapid eye moment sleep, we go with the delta waves where the brain repairs itself. But if a person doesn't stay in the rapid eye uh, moment sleep, which is the deepest part of the sleep for a long period of time, then patient will develop develop disorder personality, there will be decline in the cognitive function of the brain, there will be decreased sexual drive, the patient will always be complaining of the morning headache without being aware of his or her restless sleep and poor quality of the sleep. So these two actually lead to all these problems. Patient will be drowsy or drunken in the morning and there will be ankle swelling. So these are the main clinical feature with which these patients come to the hospital. Now once we have uh, taken the history of the patient and we have seen the risk factor present or absent in that patient, how we are going to diagnose these patients? Uh, initially we take the clinical history from the family and especially the spouse because in majority of the 
patients uh, cases these are the male patients and they are obese so probably the uh, wife will be giving the history of snoring and uh, uh, disturbed sleep and restless sleep and cognitive behavioral changes and all these kind of uh, things which can augment the diagnosis uh, we can uh, do the pulse oximetry for 24 hours because uh, when the we do the pulse oximetry and preferably it's if it is video recorded then we can find that there is a saturation drop during the night and it is sort of it's a, such a cyclic way it's a snoring silence and snoring cycle it happens in a way that if it gives a sort of appearance of the pulse oximetry waveform so pulse oximetry along with the video recording if pulse oximetry result isn't good then can be helped but if, if the pulse oximetry is not helpful then uh, in some cases we can do the polysomnography what we do in the polysomnography we do the oximetry we also do the electroencephalography and we do the abdominal and thoracic movement watch. So this is how it is done. These are dedicated rooms where the patient sleeps and patient uh, undergoes all these monitoring during that polysomnographic uh, studies. There is a very, very important uh, scale or the scoring system which we call the Epworth sleepiness score. You ask the patient that how many chances are that if given the following situation you will either never dose or one stands for slight chances of the dozing and two uh, two stands for the moderate chances of dozing and three stands for greatest are the uh, high likely of patient to dose so you ask the patient if you are sitting and reading a book how many chances are that you will doze or become sleepy starting from zero it goes up to all the way up to the three zero means no dozing at all no sleepiness one means slight chance two mean moderate and three mean highest chances of sleepiness so the one situation is sitting and reading and second uh, sitting and reading second is watching a tv or reading a book so it was sitting and reading it may be reading a book or watching a tv and then sitting and inactive at a public place like a meeting or a theater sitting and talking to someone like if uh, somebody is sitting with someone and is talking then during that talk patient may become sleepy so you will ask the chances and you will give them the number lying down at the bed at the noon for some time if the situation permits and sitting in a car is a passenger for one hour straight without any interval are driving a car and sitting in it at a traffic jam or a traffic signal for some time so you ask the patient these situations you then ask the probability of uh, them dozing in this situation and you give them the number this is known as the Epworth sleepiness score and the normal is 5 plus minus 4 severe obstructive sleep apnea apnea happens in those patients who score either 16 plus minus 4 and narcolepsy is one of the worst form of the uh, obstructive sleep apnea where muscles become so flaccid that patient sorts of falls on the ground even during the laughter so when the when the scoring system is more than uh, 17 digits then probably the patient is having the narcolepsy so this is how you diagnose these patient of the obstructive sleep apnea Now once you have diagnosed the case, the time is to manage or treat these patients of the obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, first of all, you will have to manage the correctable cause. For example, if the patient is obese, you will have to ask them to lose the weight. If patient has got some nasal deformities, you will correct or advise them to get it corrected by the ENT surgeons. If the patient has got like adenoids or this uh, uh, patient has got uh, like enlarged tonsils or patient is acromegalic. So whatever is the correctable cause, you will to first manage it. Secondly, uh, some patients will need and more than 50% of the patient can tolerate the CPAP, which is the continuous positive airway pressure. It is a nasal CPAP suits the most and it's a positive pressure of 7 to 10 millimeter of the mercury, which keeps the airway open even during the inspiration. So CPAP is the second option and lastly those 50% of the patient who do not tolerate the CPAP you will have to give them the tablet modafinil 
it's a 100 milligram or 200 milligram tablet and this is a CNS stimulant and it will uh, increase the activity of the brain and even during the inspiration the muscles will not be hypotonic which muscles the respiratory helping muscles uh, literally the only muscles during the inspiration in most of the patient is the diaphragm but you need to uh, activate the other muscles like the genioglossus and the palatal muscles. So you give tablet modafinil 100 to 200 milligram tablet. I hope uh, it helps a little bit in understanding of the obstructive sleep, ap uh, sleep apnea. It's a very brief description and sort of a review. And if, if this video is helpful, please subscribe the channel and do press the bell icon and help me grow the channel further.